now uh, let me tell you first when it started 1980 uh, fetal placental matter unit we never called diabetes in pregnancy this name itself title itself says what i'm going to speak and, uh, when it started by the professor Moses, the director of the institute of Stigenic called phillips and first of his kind in the country, I was also involved to that. <clears throat> now, this is the institute where this was started in the challenge, you know, the oldest institute in the country where I also studied. So, with this introduction, I will proceed further by talk that fetal handling of maternal glucose, it's not wonderful. Fetal handling of maternal glucose, which is a topic which covers because in to me, I think the most difficult topic in the medicine is diabetes and pregnancy because it involves three people Who would be the father, would be mother and a child so we have to be very careful dealing with this way because the most difficult topic in diabetes is diabetes and pregnancy and let me talk about fetal and matter glucose here friend, the adverse outcome for the fetus are still very common despite significant advances in glycemic control for pre-existing type 1 and type 2 diabetes still this problem is there and not only that now we also know the GDM despite treatment LGA still occurs so this is the problem which are, which are facing now so this is the most important organ in the in the development of fetal is the placenta so we will call this fetal placental maternal hormone metabolic interaction and implication so many things are going to inter inter interact and we we'll to see how we can come to a conclusion so now we know this is a fetal apparatus this, this apparatus during intrauterine life the fetus the membranes the cord and the placenta form an organic fold and disease and disease of any part must react upon and affect the other so it is a uniform it is a, it is a, that's why you call fetal matter urine and fetal present utero apparatus so now we will further go what happens in pregnancy <coughs> the simple the simple statement here a new structure develops de novo during pregnancy and matures till it is expelled at the completion of the gestational period during this time what could happen here the metabolic adaptations that occur during pregnancy are to accommodate a rapidly growing tissue transplant that is called transplant because it's going to come out again the concept is that this belongs to placenta and the fetus called known as conceptus so next is next discussion will be here nutrition here the goal of Barker's hypothesis is very important hypothesis here the goal of nutrition of pregnancy is to support maternal placental and fetal metabolic needs it may be first introduction to the lifetime of healthy heating so this is the basic understanding here now we will proceed further insulin response in the mixed meal here this is insulin response very accurately modulated by the calories load so that a normal human blood glucose remains stable within a narrow band in spite of wide variations of food intake i think i was listening to the talk by other people about the gadgets and measurement all but this is what happens here now after this Placenta is a temporary endocrine organ, it is, but it is very very vital, it is an endocrine organ. This produces lots of things. Placenta connects the developing fetus by the umbilical cord to the uterine wall to allow nutrient uptake, thermoregulation, waste elimination and gas exchange by the mother's blood supply to fight against internal infection and to produce hormones we support pregnancy. You will see what all, how important the percent of for the developing uh, fetus in the mother's uterus. Now, I have known placenta here. Now, it is what it can do. The placenta facilitates embryogenesis, growth, maturation and survival of the fetus. The vital role placenta plays. And then placenta has the capacity to synthesize steroid, peptide hormones and to modulate and transport transport maternal fuel to the fetus that is why you call endocrine endocrine organ and explicit hormone metabolic adaptations now let's see here you will see this is another important message here schematic representation of metal fetal nutrient nutrient transmitted in humans this you will hear metal glucose 
for the mother to the fetus goes easily from one compartment to another compartment through the placenta and amnus also can transfer from mother to fetus and also ketones but not take this also little bit may may not it's not so sure but not from mother fetus to mother and then insulin definitely will not cross and glucose will not cross so these are metabolic factors are all cross but not these hormones in the outside from mother to fetus don't go now let us see how this could how with fetal landing and occur here this is a very interesting point here the concept of concept is fetus and placenta for its own normal growth and development brings about alteration in metal field metabolism and hormones so this is necessary for them so these hormones regulated adaptations include increase the hepatic glucose production in the fasting state to ensure a glucose supply at all times and then what have we in the fed state lateral peripheral resistance spares the glucose for the fetus that is a beautiful beautiful balancing between the fasting state and in the fed state so changes the metal metabolic dependence will be so with summing up here decrease fasting blood plasma glucose level most of us know about that i'm not going to detail how it occurs increase the post blood glucose level increase fasting and post insulin levels beta cells hypertrophy and hyperplasia decrease insulin sensitivity and not all this is occur in the metabolism now sum up summing up so, so many things now it's discussed here effect of metal fuels on offspring development modified frankels and modern hypothesis here pregnant pregnant diabetes that is called hyperglycemic pregnancy insulin level is low so it increases the plasma glucose level amnas in life is called mixed nutrients this is mixed nutrients cross plasma as i told you earlier itself the placenta and then this mixed nutrients stimulate insulin in the fetal beta cell there's insulin hyperinsulin in the fetus and then mixed nutrients both will produce macrosomia so in the in the, the neonate born there may not be enough nutrition they may go into hypo or such different matter but the our point here is mixed nutrients hyperinsulin in the fetus macrosomia when child is born this is what could happen in adult life the male male child means obesity and impaired growth and fi- finally diabetes whereas if you go to female child there is obesity gdm will occur gdm again diabetes but the problem is this is igt in the male stops their diabetes whereas in the female this this she is saying like as here the diabetic woman will produce again become diabetic see this vicious cycle goes on so that is uh, diabetes begetting diabetes so you have to break this cycle now i actually on small case study here for what what could happen here obstetric case in mr abortion pre pregnancy weight 52 kg and then anterior woman underwent gdt twice in their life in the, in the pregnancy first 16th week it was absolutely normal and again repeated 28th week again absolutely normal further she didn't come out in 20th week what had happened here will be here is interesting here anterior woman did not come for follow up as she had left to her maternal place for this usual tendency in her country they go to mother's place and when we, when we, by the time she reached the uh, advanced pregnancy term pregnancy her weight became 64 she was 52 turned up 64 almost 12 kg increase her weight and not only that the total weight was 12 kg, 12 kg and she delivered a female baby of 4 kg required else the lower cell section but at first at first there is no complication the only thing is she produced big baby so you'll see here all the values are normal what are we don't know what happened 28th week but she delivered normal baby but i my mother sent baby so this this is one case study i go i discuss let's see what happened how it happened now this is another important physiology each islet cell functions as endocrine organ placenta is endocrine organ but in islet cell also inside another endocrine organ this year the human pancreas begins to develop four weeks after conception the first insulin deposit can be found between week 7 and 8 so early this is found but pancreatic islet differentiates 10th to 11th week of gestation and then recognizes and responds to maternal glycemia on 11th week of gestation that is why you have seen as early as possible now let us see what could happen here the antenatal amniotic fluid insulin the originates from loss of into fetal i will discuss this subsequently just note this point amniotic fluid insulin which originates from loss into fetal urine is just 
detectable at 12th week and more easily measurable at 14th week onwards. So this has got a role to play. Elevated amniotic fluid in cell concentrations beginning at 14th week are associated not only with the mother's risk of developing GDM but also with the risk of the fetus having a birth weight more than 90th percentile. So this, this is a phenomenon which I am going to discuss subsequently. Contribution to glucose, this, this, is the, this is the slide which I am going to discuss here. Contribution to glucose gradient. M, mother, present of and fetus, F. So glucose, as I told you, glucose can cross the placenta, placenta. When it, hyperglycemia occurs in the mother, it crosses the placental placenta. Goes the fetal compartment, again fetal glucose goes up. Because of the glucose is available in the fetus, insulin secretion goes up, the hyperinsulinemia. And because there is hyperinsulinemia and hyperglycemia in the fetal compartment, child become puts on weight, adiposity, that is cause for the macrosomia. So this is what is happening. Now, little bit a little more on this. We will see what could happen here. Maternal role and fetal role. Maternal role will be here. Again, mother, present on fetus. Here, what could happen here when the present on the maternal hyperglycemia crosses the placenta, goes to the fetal compartment. What is happening here? That, that is an increasing of hyperglycemia, but still all the glucose, which is hyperglycemia in the mother, goes into the fetal compartment, fetal. Then what fetal does, here this is what it does. In the fetus, because of this hyperglycemia, this, this hyperglycemia simulate fetal hyperglycemia as a consequence of the higher, higher glucose level. So this is what happens in the, this is, this is what we call as Maternal hyperglycemia pushes glucose into the fetal compartment and fetal hyperglycemia pulls glucose. This pushes, this pulls it. This is called fetal glucose steel across the placenta. This is what the concept also of telling fetal glucose here. How you see the fetus handling the mother's glucose. Mother glucose it is crosses. So fetal is able to control it by, by a secondary more of insulin. So you will have both fetal hyperglycemia and maternal hyperglycemia. That is why you, that is what we call poor glycemic control. Early in pregnancy will result in the establishment of fetal hyperglycemia causing an exaggerated fetal glucose steel. As a consequence, the overactive glucose steel will increase the dispersal of maternal glucose into the fetus, thus attenuating the levels of maternal hyperglycemia. See, this is what happened. Mother glucose goes into the fetal compartment and then that's, uh, that causes low level of fetal maternal hyper, hyperglycemia. Finally, importantly, the effect of lowering maternal glucose driven by the fetus will be greatest in pregnancies, the most hyperglycemic fetus. So these are the pink markers, maternal hyperglycemia, fetal hyperglycemia are what's happening here. Because of this, what could happen here? All evidences suggest the present is a passive conduit for the proportion of metal glucose destined to reach the fetus, at least at the end of gestation. And then thus, the maternal to fetal glucose flux is mostly dictated by the maternal to fetal glucose concentration gradient. Now, summing up of this, an exaggerated glucose steel by hyperlysmic fetus could also attenuate maternal glucose levels. So, mother glucose comes low during an OGT, providing an explanation for why some mothers, the fetuses with all the characteristics of the most affected fetuses have normal glucose tolerance. I hope this point is very clear. In spite of the, the, all these things, as sugar is normal, but something has gone wrong with the fetus. Thus, there is a risk that GDM will not be diagnosed in women, the most affected fetuses. Because fetus has taken the responsibility. So that is what probably is what happened. I, I remember I told in case there are all the sugars are normal, but then the end to produce a big baby of 4 kg. That is the reason was probably this what happened in the index case study which I told in the case one. So this is called fetal handling of metal glucose. Then just a week ideal for screening will be usual recommendation is 24 to the just a weeks, but early screening of our glucose tolerance and care could avoid some diabetes related complications such as adhemias, fetal anomalies 
and put the bugs in human with just a diabetes monitor. So you need to screen much earlier. So GD manifests in all tremors pregnancy, which is your seen here in the in your clinical practice. Sixteen percent of them develop in the just the sixteenth week, and seventy and almost one twenty two percent is there between seventeen to third week, and sixty one percent in the third third trimester. Six could be in the could have a, a pre just hyperglycemia. So out of this, this is this is the data from the our DIPAP study. But now this, I just want to. This is what happened in 2007. This was the problem of GDM, different trimester, first, second, third trimester. Then after 10 years, what after manifestation of GDM in early physician, another another study was made. It was 11,000 women in this first trimester itself. There was 31 percent, which is totally increased. The second trimester 42 percent, and third trimester 25.3. So almost 70 percent of women develop in the first less than 24th week. Necessitating early weeks of screening. This about in in 2016. In 10 weeks, 10 week years time, so much change occurred in the fetal metabolism. Now, case this is another case study here. Uh, 35 years old, third gravida. This entire woman had undergone blood test. She has gone was late, 20 weeks. She should have done much earlier, but unfortunately, probably nobody thought about that. So even that time it was one not two one forty. Now as an Ashok Das Ashok was telling in the, in the introduction, this was the number which which should be very careful. They missed it. This we always were ignored. And at this gestational week thirty five, when this woman went for routine ultrasonogram, it revealed fetal macrosomia, fetal weight at three thousand eight eighty three more than three kg. Antenna one was then advised to do GDT. When the GDT was done, it was so alarming. It was so high fasting, 131, 1 hour, 2 sodium, and 2 hour, 242. It was referred to as around 36 weeks. A very almost coming to the end of the confinement. So here immediately what we did was we started the insulin, and then we are able to bring down this value from 1, 1, 112, and almost 172. We cannot say it is excellent control, but we are able to bring it down. And then after another week, it brought down absolutely normal level of 88. I want to tell you, but we gave insulin both morning and evening. But in spite of all these things, what happened at this? She went in first injection, newborn birth weight more than 4.5. So this was shows we missed the diagnosis early in the pregnancy. We have bad. Whatever you do after the fetal develops macrosomia, we cannot rebut even with insulin. Only thing you can allow, we can, she can develop a normal, normal child, live, live child, but we can't avoid the, avoid the weight, weight of the macrosomic baby. So the hallmark of diabetic fetopathy is fetal hyperinsulinemia, drives fetal fat accumulation, very often resulting in LGA birth. This is what happens here. Then early detection, another study I am showing here, what we have done here, early detection of glucose tolerance. During pregnancy, the care given results in a good fetal outcome, similar to that of non-diabetic pregnancy. Here, two hundred, two hundred not so many pregnant women were taken in our study, irrespective of the hours. Mostly, we concentrated more on GDM, and then about GDM was eighty-seven, twenty, forty-two percent of our GDM. It is in this is what important for us now. Group one detected between less than twenty-third week, that is almost sixty-two percent. Whereas again, group two. Related at 24 weeks is over 30, almost 38 percent. What had happened was on the follow-up, this woman who this outcome of birth weight was near it was, if those who have less than 23 week, their weight was absolutely normal, 3 to 3.13. Whereas here it has went almost 3.5 kg, whereas Indian baby is 2.5 to 3.5. So late pregnancy, late week of pregnancy, even if we try to control. They may not, we may not be able to avoid the macrosomy baby. So, can tight glycemic control later in pregnancy reverse fetal hyperinsulinemia and fetal glucose steal? Is it possible? No. Despite normalization of birth weight, many of the GDM has not been shown to normalize the excess fetal adiposity. Thus, fetal hyperinsulinemia appears to be difficult to normalize with the usual approach. Managing mild mitral hypertension. So the message is that you must screen as early as possible the first trimester itself. So my comment here will be here. Remember this. 
We may not miss any DDM by screening around 24 days. Vague suggestion, but a substantial number of pregnant women who develop DDM in the earlier weeks of pregnancy are likely to have been delayed diagnosis and may not receive appropriate medical care. That is what that is what's happening. That's why we are not able to avoid macrosomia. So the, the final talk of mine will be here. The pattern of glycemia in all pregnancy will be here. The fasting will be says 17 plus or minus 8 and then 1 hour 120, 2 hour 110. This is very interesting uh, again uh, discussion I want to make here. What could have a newborn birth weight next to the metal glucose level? We have, found, we have published this data is the occurrence of macrosomia was continued as the 2 plasma glucose increased from 120 milligrams. That means your target should be less than 120 in 2 hours. And if you go to fasting, abnormal fasting plasma glucose, the pregnancy, occurrence of birth rate of newborn, 90, 90th percentile was continued as fasting blood should increase from 80, 90, 80 milligrams or significant of 90 milligrams. So fasting should be less than 90 and out of three post should be less than 120. That is what we recommend. The fetal, this is interesting phenomena in the pregnancy during pregnancy, fetal renal threshold and fetal mechanism. How it occurs? I think I mentioned somewhere the amniotic fluid insulin. This is what happened here. The renal threshold for glucose in the fetus is probably less than 110 milligrams. When the maternal glucose level is more than 110, that shows you such a tight level you must maintain, cause a fetal glycosuria. Therefore, Uncontrolled metal levity is associated with polyadramnia, sperm fetal polyuria. It goes on passing urea inside the uterus, polyuria inside the uterus. So the consequence of this will be, at 20 weeks of gestation, the fetus begins to swallow the amniotic fluid. Minor transient elevation of blood glucose on the maternal side not only results in elevation of blood glucose on the fetal side, but also results in the glucose enriched amniotic fluid ingested by the fetus for hours. This is what I mentioned earlier, amniotic fluid insulin. And not in further, under, further understanding will be here, the gut stimulus for insulin production in the fetus will be more potent than the transient intravenous hyperglycemia. Thus, hyperglycemia for even less than one hour, once a day, the mother may have produced a fat, fatal insulin stimulus through the oral route for hours. So, see, now how, what a brutal physiology here, and we have not understood this, but I think all of us follow this, I want to say now, elevation of maternal glucose levels more frequently after every meal, for example, may produce a more prolonged water glucose load for the fetus. The over-nutrition of the extra glucose product to fetus through the water route produce an over-fed over fat fetus. That is why I told in the previous slide, you will maintain less than 110 or 120. More than that, it is going to be a problem for the fetus. So the spectrum will be here. While it may be consequence of maternal glycemia only, other nutrients such as amino acids and fatty acids and the hormones, cytokines could also contribute, particularly in the pregnancies of obese mothers in whom glucose tolerance is normal but cord blood C peptide levels are shown to be elevated at birth. Um, after, after I told um, Anna, Ashok and Alok and that I won't speak this topic, I was just going to the final worship. Uh, I came across this study, a maternal overweight, it's alarming, I never knew this, first time hearing this, maternal overweight tied to fertility issues in cells. How is it? It's a poor fellow. A study published in America, on Office of Gynecology, uh, GS, suggests that women who are overweight, or obese, the pregnancy may be more likely to have infertile cells. How do you like this? And researchers say that maternal overweight may be tied to hormone imbalance that affects the development of male offspring's reproductive system. It's a very pitiable. As soon as she happens to overweight, her son is going to be infertile. So it's this study which included now about 9,000 women Men and women aged 31 to 34 found that sons born to overweight mothers were 40% more likely to be infertile than those born to mothers of non-weight. Alarming, alarming finding. So my messages will be here. It is necessary to optimize metabolic control, early in pregnancy, this elastic pre-pregnancy planning for women with pre diabetes, as well as for those at increased risk of GDM and better means to safely normalize glycemia. So I'll quote here my I know, I know him very well, he was in Chicago, this is uh, Norman Frankel, 
No single period in human development provides a greater potential than pregnancy. A long range payoff by a relatively short end period of enlightened metabolic manipulation. This brutal statement which is made. So all of us very careful. Once once change occurs in the fetus, you cannot do anything out of that. So it is better to sleep as early as possible so that mother birth should be absolutely normal within the range. So all of us, all of us should all start in the uterus. So please careful, be careful and you, you, all of the old the world nation is in her hand, hand. We are able to control the diabetes or hyperglycemia in the pregnancy. Probably you can avoid the epidemic of diabetes in the world. Thank you very much, my fear, dear friends, for giving the opportunity to discuss on this topic. Hope I have conveyed the message of what I wanted. Thank you very much for your passion, dearie.